Ladies and gentlemen, the most controversial zombies map tier list. We are actually finally going to be talking about the number one spot on this. And also, CJ has made an incredible video actually debunking what I said in his video, talking about flow and saving the importance of flow in zombies as well. So this is going to be exciting. We're going to react first to his explanation of Togger Toten being the greatest zombies map and then get into his reasoning of flow. So, ladies and gentlemen, to ask you, let's get into you this, baby. What the greatest zombies map of all time is. What would you say? It's not Togger Toad. To <laughs> Origins. Origins. Mob of the Dead. Mob of the Dead. Uh, Shadows of Evil. Rise and Drop. De. Well, what if uh, I were to tell GK. You, it's Call of the Dead. Maps. In fact, what do you it's mean? not even in Black Ops Three. That's crazy. Two. That's crazy. Or one. <laughs> or even World at War. No. That's the crazy. greatest zombies map of all time is the final map released in Black Ops 4. Tap. It's funny because when I watch Chaos X Silencer's list, I literally made a joke that nobody has ever said that this was the best zombies map of all time. And it's because so many people were disappointed with the finale of the Ether Zombie storyline, which is why it's so bizarre to me hearing someone finally say this is the greatest zombie map of all time. And listen, I love Call of the Dead. It's my number two map and I don't put Tog this high. So I have to know what his explanation Actor is. Toten. All right, wait. Before you click off the video, let me explain. <laughs> I'm not just going to drop a bomb on your lap like that without explaining why. No, this is good. This is good. And that's what You're I'm here bold, to do. You're bold, CJ. Go through, break down, and dissect Let's why Tagger Toten is the perfect zombies map and the ultimate blending of classic sensibilities and modern map design. Right. With the introductions out of the way, let us begin. Let's get it, man. I'm excited. I want to know why. Because... I do agree with this though. See, this is the thing. It's going to be the exact same thing as his controversial tier list. I'm going to agree with the points, but not agree with his placements. Literally. I do agree. Tog has a better layout than Call of the Dead. It's true. It's true. What I'll makes say a it. good map? I'll is say it the it. guns, the bosses, the Easter egg? Well, all of those things can... I think it's an amalgamation and the synergy between all of them. Certainly add to a map. The most important thing for a map to be good is its layout. Yeah. Tagger Toten has, without question, one of the most perfect layouts and map flows of all time. It's because they fixed a pre-existing layout that wasn't fully fleshed out, which is why I think CJ likes it so much. Both I'm just gonna throw it out. Are this so man loves perfect. innovation. I have to talk about them That's together why. because never before has a map layout flowed so perfectly into itself. Which is wild because Alpha Omega was the previous Zombies map, and that map made Nuketown worse, in my opinion. Firstly, this map is big, but it yeah. never feels its size. Because it's of the zip large, lines. But it never yeah. feels tedious to traverse. That's why zip lines are one of my favorite traversal systems in Zombies. That's why I like Mauer to Toten. Zip lines are phenomenal in Zombies. They're incredible. And there's we certainly more. a lot to traverse. There's yeah. the spawn, the lighthouse, the yeah. beach, the ship, the sunken path, and the biggest addition. There's three power switches on this map, and he likes the layout. Like, that's crazy, man. The facility. Yeah, the, the facility, facility as a location was such a risky move on the developers' it part. It really was. Putting an entire Verruckt sized area. It's a whole map up here, literally. On a remake yeah. of a map. Yeah. When you first see it up on the mountains, you think, oh, yeah, that's the facility you heard about in the original radios on Call of the Dead. Right. But only after traversing through the map, unlocking more areas, and doing more tasks, the moment comes when you... It's a cool way of unlocking a new area that we really haven't seen in Zombies. Because most of the time, you buy a door or you do something. But this is like, you got to actually open up the majority of the original map to then open up the new area of the map. And it's unlike Blood of the Dead, where it's not unsegmented. They're actually connected really well because of the zip lines. That's why we love zip lines. You man. realize that you can go up there. Yeah. It really is a special feeling going up to that facility for the first time. It's completely different aesthetically from the rest of the map, but it doesn't feel that it's tacked on in any way. And right. the reason for that is Tagged or Toten's masterful map flow. Because Tag is a remake, and it's a lot easier to see how much better the map can flow when tweaks and additions have been made to an already existing town. I think that's why he likes it so much, right? Because of call, it's again, it's another mob of the dead, blood of the dead uh, sort of discernment where it's like every single thing you see on call of the dead that could have been fixed is fixed on this map, which is why it feels so satisfying, right? The most impressive thing is that every 
every addition to this map in terms of areas, accessible paths, and new doors have made this map comfortable to traverse. I will say it's a little big. It's a little big even with the zip lines. Like, there's a lot. I know the flingers help as well, especially the one on the facility. That is a godsend. But... I came to the realization a while yeah. ago when playing this map, something that really made the light bulb go off in my brain on why this map feels so good to traverse, despite there being water that slows you down. I walked into the area at the bottom of the ice slide, and I noticed a door there. Now, mind you, I never opened this door. Nobody does. Literally nobody does. I never open this door either because you just it, it goes in the water. It's a cool little passageway, but it's so useless. I often forget it's even there. Yeah. And while I was thinking on why this door was there, it hit me. It's to save the player from getting trapped. Well, true, but when does that ever happen on Black Ops 4 when you have specials weapons, man? You know? Every area Every path has to have at least two doors and exits for the player. True. If I went into here and the zombies were following behind me and I didn't have the ammo to kill them, I have no chance. I to be honest though, I even have never ran into this situation in Call of the Dead. That's why like, I get it from a design standpoint, but in practice, personally, and I love Call of the Dead, I've played it so much, I have never once had an issue where I've been stopped in the speed cola area. So I get what he's saying, but it's it doesn't really land fully, be you dead. know? Tiger Toten's map layout eliminates these dead ends for the player to get trapped in. Right. Every single area has more than one way for the player to get away. I feel that Tag has no bullshit downs that seem unavoidable due to poor map design or tight hallways. I agree with that. The ship, yeah. the A beach, lot of maps the lighthouse, have that, even the facility, there are always multiple exits out of yeah. every area to keep the player from getting cornered with no way out. That's now true. that is stellar map design. It is, it is. They basically fix Call of the Dead. Like, I like the map layout of this map, but honestly, when I look like at a map like Call of the Dead Remaster on Black Ops 3 where all they fixed was that one little ledge next to Quick Revive where you can come back into the spawn room, that to me almost felt like a bigger change than all of Togger Toten. And it's, it's just interesting because that to me is proper map flow. You know, it's actually bridging everything in together. I think Tog still does it well, but they didn't have to go all the way like this. You know, you die from a mistake that you made and it's not the map's fault. This right. makes old areas that were complete death traps entirely safe for the player to traverse. True. Artifact storage is a great example. Yes. Remember how horrible it was in the original trying to stay alive here when the pack of punch moved to this area and you The thing is is the reason why it was like this is because they wanted to make getting jug on Call of the Dead the hardest thing possible. Like when you spawn on Call of the Dead, you are at the peak polar opposite point of where Juggernaut is. And it's it's just two different map design philosophies kind of contradicting. And then Tog made this like the Easter egg hub spot, you know. You had to go there mid round. Right. Well now the pack location not only is more safe with a non-watery area that it sits on, if you shoot this pipe, it drops water on this fire blocking your way. And now you have an entirely this type of stuff is cool. I agree. We need more creative stuff like this to open up new areas in zombie maps. I agree with this fully. Though. New area yes. added just to make yeah. going into this part of the map safer for the player. Yeah. Shooting that pipe to drop the water down is actually a really good bit of map interactivity. It is. Usually it don't really see is. Destructible environments in zombies maps. Yeah. No. We need more of this. Like this is truly what I think peak zombies map design is. Is getting the player to rethink the way they do things. Now let's talk Tag's most defining element to its map flow and why it's so good and how it just elevates this map to the top of the, the list. The cutscenes on this map are so bad. It's so sad seeing it all these years later, man. Fast travel? No, the travel on this map is phenomenal. This map actually has flow. It's true, it's true. This map has flow. It's how true. How is it that a map this big has such perfect flow? Well, yeah. maps have had- Zip lines. I'm telling you. Fast travels They're before, goaded. admittedly, They're goaded. for dead ends and such. But yeah. remember, Tag has no dead ends. That's true. It uses fast travels as a perfect means to traverse the map from any area 
to the next. The zipline and flinger system from Call of the Dead has been expanded tenfold. Instead of only being able to zipline from the top of the lighthouse to the back of the ship. This is probably the best change on Tong. I agree. It's just, I think these changes also would have landed a lot further had this not been the finale of the Ether storyline. Like, people are expecting, like, a great War Zombies map, not Call of the Dead 2. You know, or from the top of the ship to the beach. Now you can zip line from anywhere to. It's anywhere. true. It's this such a great addition. Mechanic, you can go up zip line. Yes, this, this opens was so up the nice. movie possibilities to an almost endless degree. Yeah, there's nowhere you can't go from anywhere else. Yes, they even added new zip lines to areas you couldn't originally go to, which is sick. I really like that. Like zip lines are legendary, literally, and the flinger. Like, and come all on, the new areas have new zip lines and flinger destinations to yep. reach them. This is one of the only maps where no area goes unused or unexplored. It kind of feels like an original Black Ops 1 Zombies map in that way, and it's because it takes all of Call of the Dead and just does it better. Like, it just saddens me because I wish we got to see more remasters like Tog. I, Tog is one of my few remasters of the Ether storyline that I actually like in BO4 because it's genuinely well thought out. Because of the ease at which the player can traverse this map, it encourages the player to move around so much more. Almost right. all zombie maps have those certain locations in which you'll either run through one time or you'll never even go there in the first place. Either the map has nothing in that area to do in. Or Blood of the Dead is a bad example of map flow. It's so true because it's just all this stuff so far apart and even the fast travels will maybe bring you from like here to here but the whole arm length they will not take you that's bad map flow right or it's just a pointless area that puts the player in a disadvantage tag yeah. has no area like that true every room path and area has something in it always an opening easy way always to get a way to. out the flinger on the Kind of like how it's the way out of the Ether storyline, man. It's kind of symbolic. The facility is the perfect example of the map's brilliant flow. This yeah. flinger, unlike the one at the ship, can fling you to three different areas. Oh, this is probably my favorite stand, part of it. As thought. well as there yeah. being two zip lines on either side of this flinger. It and then the heat pack, which gives you longer time in the water. Like, just genius. Genius. The teammate Love is those down effects. on the Love regular those areas, additions. and you're up at the facility. You have five different fast travels to get to that downed player. True. This is what helps the map not feel its size. Yeah. Tag is one of the biggest maps in Black Ops 4 it in is. terms of playable space. It is. But you can get to anywhere so quickly, it never feels too big. It's the perfect large-sized map while still having the elements of the smaller, simpler maps from Black Ops 1. I agree. However, I think that map flow doesn't always have to be like how many ways you get to a certain place. Map flow also just means like in terms of the layout of the map, can I access every part of the map just naturally, you know? And on TOG, you can't. You need the zip lines, which are fun. But it's also just like, I think of a map like DE. Like DE is so perfect in its map flow. The Wonder Spheres bring you exactly where you need to go every single time. They're phenomenal, right? And it doesn't have to have like five zip lines to still be good, you know? What's next here? The defining mechanics. Yeah. It sucks, because I, I wish Call of the Dead and Tog like really came up before Alpha Omega. I feel like people really drop the ball on caring about ether after alpha omega and this map kind of suffered as a result of it but come on man we got to see some good mechanics of you having baby. a good map layout and flow is what separates a bad map from a decent one true but a map's unique mechanics is what separates a decent one from a great to one. an amazing one yeah tag's main mechanics are in tune with its enemies just as much as its flow is with its layout Tag's main gameplay loop, besides the normal killing of zombies and opening doors to get Pack-A-Punch, is the implementation of the fire zombie. I personally don't like this system. I don't know what it is. Like, to me, it's just too gimmicky. It's throw a snowball at a zombie head that's on fire, do it three times, get three parts, build a dynamite, blow up a door, do that four or five times to open up all the doors on the map. To me, just a little gimmicky and kind of overcomplicated. Like, it kind of goes against your point of what you just said about the pack-a-punch area in the in the bottom area where you do the tog easter egg, where you shoot the water pipe and all the fire goes out. That, to me, is kind of contradicting to this. And but maybe, freezing elements. Maybe I'm, maybe the I'm wrong. The main special enemy of Tag to Toten is the fire zombie, which yeah. begins showing up on round three. 
Getting too close or killing him with normal ballistics will cause him to explode, doing an area of effect damage. I've never even seen that. Killing him with freezing elements or weapons will cause him to drop a part for one of the map's buildables. Yes. The dynamite. After three fire zombies are killed with freezing weapons, such as snowballs for example, you will have enough parts to build the dynamite. Now the dynamite, despite what it may seem from the outset, is not actually a weapon, but rather a tool to open new paths of the map. It looks like the dynamite from Buried, you know? I don't know, it just doesn't even look like it belongs on this map either in a way. There are specially marked barricades blocked by sandbags, yeah. and once dynamited, will open whole new paths and- See, the thing is though, is that like, you gotta think about this IRL. If you were IRL, why would you blow this barrier up when you could just walk two rocks up and go around it? You know what I mean? Like, that's where this concept loses me. Even areas of the map, making the flow of Tagder Toten even better than it already was. Right. And this is the main gameplay mechanic. Using the map's unique elements to kill the special zombie to acquire parts for the map's unique piece of equipment to open new paths and make the map's movement and flow better for the player. It is a very unique mechanic specifically for flow. I'll give you that. But the thing is, is like, to me, it almost doesn't even fit Call of the Dead, you know? Like, this is what I'm saying with this quick revive ledge right here. On BL3 Remastered, just adding a slight ledge Going back to Quick Revive, to me, fixed it more than adding dynamite and making a whole system around it, you know? Rewarding the player maybe, for maybe I'm learning the map, alone but on that. using its know. mechanics to their advantage. Yeah. Very few zombie maps have such tight gameplay mechanics like Tagged or Toten does. Sort of this flow of gameplay that leads into building more onto the existing map and improving the game and making the map more accessible the longer you play it. It's true. It Using is a very smart elements mechanic to advantage system. Yep. is what Tag excels at. Yep. The secondary special enemy on this map is the electric zombie, which begins spawning. The thing I hate about this is that we saw this back in Derizen Drac, the fire and lightning zombies. And it's just like, this is the finale of zombies like we're reusing de assets again like i don't know you know Bring what i'm saying round 10 these zombies when killed up close create a static shock effect which will blur the player's vision this in turn will encourage you to put some distance from them like the fire zombies during gameplay once you start doing this long enough you will start using the freezing water as a means of slowing down the electric zombies to keep the distance from you and here is where the map's unique mechanic works in service for the player when used properly. If you kill an electric zombie in the water, all other zombies in that pool of water will be electrocuted and stunned in place. That's pretty cool. I never even knew that. Few never people even knew even that. know about this mechanic. I didn't even know that. Nope. But it's another great bit of map interactivity with the special enemy type. I just feel like I've never experienced, number one, because Black Ops 4 zombies are insanely fast, and number two, because the Thunder Gun exists on this map, and you just just take them out like that, because it doesn't even take them out. It just looks like more of like an electric cherry burst. Once again, rewarding the player for how they kill the enemies. It is true. I like that. If the electric it's zombie smart, enhances intuitive. the map's elements, and the fire zombie helps enhance the layout, then the secondary flinger at the facility leads you to getting the best addition to your movement the heat pack. on the entire yeah. map. This is probably one of my favorite parts of talk. This heat pack was so how cool. Helpful this flinger is yeah. sending you to three different locations, but at each of the three points at where you land, there's a part. Yeah. Parts for the final buildable, the heat pack. Which most people, in my opinion, that have played this map haven't even done this. They have, most people don't even realize that you can even get up to the facility on this map from a lot of casual gameplays that I've seen, which is crazy. The heat crazy. pack is the final improvement to your movement and the ultimate conclusion to the additions to the map's flow. When yeah. equipped, the heat pack gives you full unrestricted movement in the freezing water. Which is sick because I mean, going back to Call of the Dead, you know you can't even sprint, barely even walk in it. Allowing you to run at normal speed as well as slide freely. Yeah, it's but pretty the cool. zombies are still affected by the slowing effects of the water. Yeah. This makes Tagged or Toten the only map to solve the high round super sprinter problem. Issue is though, it doesn't really because 
you still need stamina up in your modifier to outrun super sprinters. I, I think it's like round 55 that they spawn in. And then number one, or number two, I mean, everybody does the camping strat on Tog. That's the other issue. The camping strat with the Togger Toten power room in Call of the Dead with the Helion Salvo is so good. It just negates all of these cool things that they put into the map simply because they never nerfed that rocket launcher. Right. And so it's like, why would I go through all of this nonsense when I can just pick up a rocket launcher PhD and that is that and I'm done with the game, you know, allowing the player. to. So like to me, it, this is like the emphasis of what the emphasis, sorry, of what Black Ops 4 was a bunch of cool mechanics that don't solve a problem because they still didn't fix the first problem. That's Black Ops 4. Train literally. with ease in any pool of water. This is the final reward for the player. The ability of full maneuverability. It's still so, such a map. sick mechanic. Once you but have yeah, the heat pack it's not necessary. No world record run you'll ever see someone pick this up because you don't need it. Simply. Paired up with both flingers and all the zip lines, running around killing zombies has never been this accessible. It is sick though. Like it is a really sick idea. It's just. I wish it wasn't on BO4. You know. I have heard some people want to remaster Tog in Black Ops 3, so I hope that's the case, man. I hope that's the case. Tiger Toten, like all maps in Black Ops 4, has many additional side quests which can give you tons of useful and assorted rewards. But before we conclude, I need to discuss the Wonder Weapons. They suck. <sighs> They suck. I am so sick of people saying that the wonder weapons on tag are bad. They suck. <laughs> they suck! Bro, listen. They suck because the Helion Salvo exists. Like, this is the thing. You're bringing up amazing points, but simply because this rocket launcher exists, it takes away all of the gameplay emphasis that Tog had. That's what I mean. Nobody really will play it now because of the Helion Salvo. It just sucks to say that, but it is what it is. It's the way BO4 is, man. This absolute is is. lie has persisted that they are somehow weak and can't kill zombies on high rounds is absolute bullshit. Here the thing is, though, comparatively to the Helion Salvo, it's still true. Like, this is what I mean. One rocket launcher breaks all of the arguments you've made in this video. <laughs> There's both the Wonder Wasp Sniper I'm and dead. the Tundra Gun. But you see what I mean? Helion Salvo, <laughs> dead. It, it, no, if it, just dead. Camp at the one window at the power, all gone. Whip out your special weapon, death machine, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, it, it literally adds nothing. And I think why people hate these wonder weapons, including myself, is these are the final ether wonder weapons, and they are just so nothing, right? Thunder Gun is theoretically worse than the Thunder Gun. Maybe not with damage, but because you need PhD to not die while using this, you know? So why would I run this when I can just run the Helion Savile? Literally. On health cap, killing full hordes. The disregarding of the- It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because look, they freeze, which means they take more time to kill, which means the Helion Salvo is better. One rocket launcher. Gun especially <laughs> pisses me off. This thing is essentially the Helion Salvo with infinite damage. And just because it hurts you with splash damage, doesn't matter. You I mean, it does though, because it's like then the Helion Salvo is just better. It's just better. You should be running man. PhD anyways if you're playing tag. True. Because of the Matryoshka dolls. They True. don't damage you if you have PhD. No, I do like the Matryoshka dolls on this map. I will say the Samantha boxes on this map suck. And it's like the main Easter egg thing. But and fire zombies do little to no damage to the player if you have PhD. As well yeah. as using the grenade launcher on the death machine and yeah. the Hellion Salvo, there's no reason not to use PhD on this map. Yeah. And besides, you had no, it's true, it's true, and you have it on Call of the Dead. That's a very good point. PhD on the original Call yeah. of the Dead for the scavenger. Very good point. And that gun sucked. It couldn't even kill past the yeah. 30s. 42 one shot, baby. <laughs> the gun can kill forever. And the wonder why. The thing is, though, like this is the thing about BO4. Like you're bringing up great points, but the Helion Salvo simply exists. That's all I gotta say. Sniper is even more <laughs> underrated. It too kills past health cap. All you have yeah. to do is land a headshot. And you but okay, okay, this is where I'll have a problem with this. 
landing a headshot on a super sprinter is almost impossible when you have like just so many of them running after you, which is why what's easier landing a headshot on a super sprinter or just shooting the ground with the Healy on Salvo. You kill the same amount of zombies as the original Wonder Woman. I rest my case. Put on dead shot. I, I rest my case. You're having trouble with headshots, and it stuns any zombies you don't kill in the horde. Plus, with 16 shots in a packed clip. I will say though, this gun is kind of like the baby gun, where it has sure it has a lot of ammo. But the thing is, you're most likely going to be shooting more than one shot to take out a horde. It's not always guaranteed. And so know? much more in reserve. The Wonder Wolf Sniper has even more killing potential than the original had. So I mean, technically, yes, but not in practice. Not practically. So anytime yeah. someone shits on the tag wonder weapons and they say that they're bad or don't kill, they're fucking lying. <laughs> they, haven't even them up and they have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Sorry. Again. Helion Salvo, that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> the, the disregarding of these wonder weapons really gets under my skin. They're amazing. The thing is though, is that it's not even Tog's fault. Like I'll say that, it's not Tog's fault ultimately. And this is why I wish we could see these maps back in Black Ops 3. It's cause it's like most people didn't even really get to experience this map because Black Ops 4 system was so inherently broken that any new type of content, it, we just didn't even care about the Wonder Weapons because it's just the Helion Salvo simply exists, man. Amazing guns, you know? and it's sadly, many people just haven't used them. Yeah. There is an well, there's no use. There's no point. There's no point. The Helion is better than all the TOG Wonder Weapons, whether you like it or not. It is, you know? Interesting gameplay parallel with Call of the Dead going on here. The That's original introduced Deadshot had a Wonder yeah, Weapon sniper shot. that required PhD and a nah. boss that was easier to deal with when using Deadshot along with sniper weapons. True. And here on Tag, now we have a Wonder Weapon in the Tundra Gun that requires PhD right. and a sniper Wonder Weapon that is helped by Deadshot. It's as if they took the elements from the original map and divided them to the new Wonder Weapons. Just one... Th the thing is, though, is that, like, we shouldn't be doing this on the finale of Ether. You know, the finale of Ether should be every single best part of zombies culminated into one map. And it's like, I love Tog, I love Call of the Dead, but that's not what it is. It's not a true finale, in my opinion, for that gameplay perspective. Sure, in a story sense, you might say think so. One last note about the Thunder Gun. In I don't know. some ways, it's actually better than the Thunder Gun. Not only does it kill forever, it also has splash damage and the freezing effect. Again, freezing effect is not a plus because it slows down zombie time, right? So, again, I I hate doing this, dude, but it's like, it's just the way it is. Meaning it's on just the truth. When you're trapped and you have to shoot the thunder gun to kill the zombies in front of you, and you get killed by the ones that are still hitting you from the back. The thunder gun splash damage will kill that one zombie as well. And again. I could make the argument of like super sprinters doesn't even matter. They're all so fast. Like, because you know what I mean? Winter's Whale is better than that, you know? To freeze zombies when it kills, it works with all the challenges involving ice or shattering frozen zombies. True. As well as getting dynamite parts from. But also, you can just do that by like throwing a snowball at him, you know? And that's a lot easier to get than the, the Tundra Gun. Fire zombies. What do you know? A wonder weapon that has infinite damage and map interactivity. It's cool. No, I, I'll give you that. It works within the map, but the BO4 system ruins it. I just wanted the to set the system ruins with it. these weapons because they add a lot more to the map's mechanics, as well as the fact that... I agree, but it, again, not to BO4 system. Every player can get any of the wonder weapons, no matter if somebody else has already got it or not. That's Adding true. Adding even more to the interactability of the map, there are a plethora of challenge podiums. I'm also... I hate to say this. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I think also every player can get the Helion Salvo and not like... I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> Which can yield a score of many different rewards. Additional challenges and maps is something that we've seen before. Most often in a central area or yeah. in the spawn room. Tag has many challenge posts. I love Tog's challenges. Like, like I said, there's so many great pluses about Tog. It's just BO4 system that ruins this map again, and all the other BO4 maps. <laughs> scattered all around the map, but it's the rewards that really differentiate these challenges from the others. 
Yes, the provide. reward. The, no, no, I will say the rewards on these challenge podiums are so phenomenal and so well thought out. I will 100% agree with that. Some sort of permanent reward that acts as a passive upgrade for the yeah. player. No, these this are sick. This can range from reduced trap yeah. cost, increased snowball carrying capacity, an ice pick to break you out of being frozen faster, and even a free self revive. Yeah, no, these are sick rewards and really well thought out. And. Treyarch needs to go back to this. Like, Cold War kind of moved away from these type of rewards. Bring this back. This Literally. idea of having a sort of permanent upgrade system for the player really adds a nice sense of progression. For the longer the match goes on, the more powerful you become. Yep. And in some ways, this mirrors how the map opens up more and becomes more accessible the longer the match goes on as well. True. This idea of adding to your arsenal of movement and gameplay is a concept that few maps besides Tagged or Toten have. You know, it is very true. Like, it is extremely cohesive. It's just what makes that cohesion jarring is, like I said, the BO4 mechanics. It's just like it doesn't fit with what, with what they've made. You know, it, it, it's so weird because it's like all this stuff that you're saying almost feels like they made it for BO3 and not the BO4 system. For you example, know? the snowballs are the premier special grenade for this map, but there is also an upgrade for them as well that right. makes them the PP a one snowballs. hit kill on any round. In yeah. addition, there are returning Matryoshka dolls, which I've also seen an upgrade to their damage. And the final special grenade, one that has a fantastic visual and thematic purpose. It unfortunately just sucks. It takes too long to use and it's it's cool. It's for the Easter egg, but not my cup of tea for sure. In Samantha's music box, yeah. which spawns in Samantha Maxis herself and can destroy- It's sick. Full I mean, look at that. One powerful strike. Yeah, it's She's sick. used consistently throughout the map's Easter egg, an egg which takes you on a wonderful journey down memory lane of zombies history. Yep. The very concept of the Easter egg is purging corruption, finding the Apothecon blood, returning the to the Garthen device. It's simple. Yeah, I like it. Challenging. It, it adds challenges from like GK. It's simple. Every it's step, not a bad Easter egg. A lot of good lore. Cleanse the evil. The final Fun step final is one step. Of the most yep. unique and memorable Easter egg endings in all of COD Zombies. I agree. Never before have we seen the way the map turns into fire. Like literally, this is something I was even thinking of if I ever wanted to remaster Call of the Dead for like Fortnite or whatever, where it's like maybe I'd make the map fire and then take a fire map like transit and make it all ice, you know? Cool things like that. Seen an entire map change like this. The cool icy 115 covered snow becomes a dark lava filled hellscape. The final holdout. They definitely did way better on this map than Alpha Omega. I will always say that. If you like this map less than Alpha Omega, I, I don't know what to tell you. Has such a perfect metaphorical completion to it. Holding yeah. out in one final stand. And this final stand is hard. It's not easy. Yeah. Which, in a way, is reflective of the entirety of the Zombies game mode. Yeah. While Zombies has never truly had a good ending for its final maps, besides the bombastic conclusion of Moon, Tag wraps up everything in a bitter, sweet bow. It literally ties it up so perfectly, because the way this story was tied up is almost still my reaction to the way that Activision treats this IP. And it's almost, to me, like the dev's way of saying we did our best. The paradox must be resolved. And you know what? Like, we did our best, but we got to move on, you know? That's the vibe I always get from Tog, literally. It isn't the ending we all expected, but that yeah. doesn't mean it's not the ending that we needed at the time. I also still think this was the original ending. It really was. Yeah. I, I, I'll say it. People won't agree, but I, I believe it was the original ending. And we, it was always going to end like this. I really believe Sometimes, that. Sometimes it really is the little things that all add up. The amount of small details put into tag really gives it that extra touch of quality. I just wish this map's trailer promotion was a lot better. Because all we got was the intro cinematic. And it, it just felt so lackluster to hype up the finale of Etherman. Like that's what I think people really remember most about this map is that... It just didn't have the same emphasis on it as even like a Derizon Drac or a Shadows of Evil. From you the know? countless amounts of visual Easter eggs, such as chalk drawings, no, like all this objects is that reference zombies past, yeah, to the George. copious amounts of radios, not just from the man in the lighthouse, but from Ultimus Richtofen as well. Yeah. They truly covered 
everything with these and left no stone unturned. Yep. There are even audio recordings that tell the entire story of the map buried. Some No, it's true. They really went all out on the radios and the lore. And even back in Alpha Omega, which is kind of sad because I probably won't hear most of that ever. <laughs> would argue that explaining everything does sort of ruin the mystery of it all. But after Blood you got of Red, to. that's what an ending this is. is the end of the Ether story. I am grateful that they gave us all the answers and tied up all the loose ends. Yeah. It's just also Before sad now complete. that this map brought the Dark Ether, and to me, the Dark Ether up until this point, until Gulf War comes out, has been just so lackluster. It's just been so... Like, honestly, when I look back, I think, man, even, like, Tog is better than most of Cold War. I kind of agree with that. Like, Dude, I really want to just go Dark Ether's a not that great so far. I just like about the map. You yeah. know, just admire the little things. I like that. I like I that. I like the idea of having a power switch. In no, the, the spawn, power switches were and cool. Once you flip it, the lighthouse shines on you, giving an indication that someone's there watching over you. Yeah, it's I cool. I like how there's two options out of spawn one to the new pathway and one to the old. I like how well the shield parts are placed, leading up to and inside of a lighthouse. So by the time you no, the get shields to the workbench, parts are really easy to find. Yeah. I like how you can talk to the man in the lighthouse, and he'll have different dialogue depending on if you have the blue rock from the cave or not. I oh, like the placement of the third perk, giving the back of the ship one of the least traveled to areas of Call of the Dead. So True. So many people don't realize that on original Call of the Dead, Double Tap is here, and I like that it makes it an integral area of the map. I agree with that. Real use here. Yeah. I like shooting of the frozen key. Reminds me of the dropping vodka bottle step from Call of the Dead. Oh, that's true. I yeah. also like the melting animation for the icicle key as well. I yeah, especially love the real sense of scale you get when you look back down from at the, the map facility. up from the facility. Yeah. I like how the three items to activate the musical Easter egg are the weapons held by the Call of the Dead crew. That's sick. I didn't even realize that. And wow. I love the, the ending, ending. in-game yeah. cutscene of the Easter Very egg. Very cool. John Rizzo put it best when he said, you, the player, have to move them forward into that better world. Yeah. Move on. It sucks because my original experience with this was uh literally it just ended before like my game crashed right before this part which to me was like the best part of tog and so i'll always remember that now as like this amazing part was just fully and forever ruined for me and let always go yeah like honestly i i think the story was really good he brought up a lot of good points i think the thing is is that the reason why this map to me is still like a b a tier map is that it's not to me what the true finale of Ether deserved. And I will always, always think about that whenever I watch Tog, which is why to me, it can never be the greatest map of all time. I could go on and on about every little thing that I like about Tag to Toten forever. Like if yeah. you blow up the dynamite at the beach location and then you can use the Ragnaroks to jump up to the lighthouse area, something that you always wish you could have done true. in the original Call of the Dead. If I talked about every area, pathway, and how the simple addition of an underwater cave improves the flow of this map to near perfection, we would literally be here all day. In the end, <laughs> Tiger Toten is a beautiful, subtle ending to the Ether story with the best map flow that any Zombies map has ever had. No, this is important because I now want to watch his video about the importance of flow because I went in on this man on flow and that's why he made a whole 15 video 15 minute video about us so let's get into it what is flow my man cj game, bro, let's hear it plays a big part in how fun certain maps are to play yeah it's one that many players don't know of it's an element to nearly every map from black ops 1 onward and to some most people don't know it because they don't think about it until they just play the map and they'll either say oh the map's good or the map's bad it can be right? a little difficult to quantify what I'm referring to is flow. Yes, sir. Now, what is flow? Every, every <laughs> Full of bro, that was a jump scare. Whether it's good <laughs> or bad. It's one of the biggest deciding factors on if I enjoy a map or not. But it's not the only thing. Flow yeah. in and of itself is in actuality a two-pronged system, which consists of map flow and game flow. Yeah, that's map true. Flow is how the Literally, I was just describing that on his talk versus talk the map, video. Either by running through areas, yeah. using fast travels, or overlapping paths. 
game flow is how the zombies traverse the map and how they- I would even say there's a third one and that's map design flow. Because while yes, there's map flow with movement, fast travel, and additional pathways, even just the design in the elevation of the areas and the way it's portrayed and how close the proximity of all that is to the system is important. I would say that's different from additional pathways and movement and fast travels. It's, it's literally how the map is placed for the player to walk around it right intersect and engage the player yeah and also how the player or players react to them yeah now, this may seem a bit wordy but the best way to explain such a seemingly nebulous concept like this is with examples yeah no i'm i'm curious First, to see let's show an example of a simple map flow then work our way to more complicated systems right nocturne totem being the first map classic the three room flows maps. that exist yeah with map flow there are two different options to yep. keep the help door closed and train in the spawn or to keep the ascend from darkness couch closed and camp upstairs or to open up both of them the right? movement for camping is quite simple once a round ends the player will need to quickly traverse downstairs to the box right. or wall by to purchase ammo or get a new weapon the traveling away from and back to the camping spot is just enough time before the next round zombies begin entering the map proper. Right. This is the simplistic map flow. Of but you notice how it's like, it's not even necessarily a flow. That's why I say it's the map design. Like the windows are placed far specifically, right? So there is a flow between the way the player experience it, is, experiences it, but it's also the way the devs place it in, no. right? The map is small and the layout is simple to traverse. Now the game flow is yeah. also one of the easiest to understand how it works. Not necessarily the easiest to master, but knowing the pathing of zombies is what leads to the strategies we play. Right, and game flow mainly just means strategies at the end of the day. Like, how efficient can we get this? Just come up with. You know? All of the zombies only enter through rebuildable barriers on Noct, so right. knowing where they spawn from is simple. Yeah. For more casual players, it's about gaining up their arsenal to funnel zombies through the narrow upstairs doorway into a straight line for collateral damage. For more advanced players, it's about getting all the zombies to spawn in and training them into a horde and spawn. I would even say it can go further because when you look at world record players like Krups, for example, on World at War Knock, the way he is able to horde perfectly with the flamethrower is kind of the amalgamation of the two. It's an advanced strategy that is always taking out zombies at every opportune moment, which is to me peak game flow. Right? This is the flow of Nocturne Totem. Right. It is simple to learn, but due to the lack of perks and the close quarters nature of the map, it's difficult to master. Yeah. Easy to know. Hard, hard to master. To do. Yes, which is now let's what every game the should more aim for. Complex modern formula. Let's see an example of bad flow. Yes. Now in modern. Ma yes, great example. <laughs> Burger Town. To oh, terrible flow. Just player movement. Yeah. Terrible flow in Burger Town. One of the biggest maps ever made. Also, t a great example of bad flow. And its poor flow yeah. contributes to it being regarded so badly. Yeah. Due to the large nature of transit, the map flow suffers. Yes. The main mode of transportation the developers created isn't by walking or running like any other map. Yeah. Transit uses the bus. And also, like, even the Denizen teleporters don't work, even though they're the same random teleporters as the ones you see on 5. 5 works because it's a small, condensed map that adds to the chaos and confusion. This is just, we threw you somewhere in the middle of nowhere. You know, Which like, that's how it is. mechanic where you are either waiting for it to move while right. you're on it, or waiting for it to show up when you're not. Right. As the bus's circular path around the map never changes, it leads to the player being forced to follow the bus's schedule instead of their own. Yes. This essentially forces the player to forego this mode of transportation. Or hopefully get lucky with the teleports, right? To, it's to terrible flow. It's like an RNG level of flow, which is not good. But avoiding the tediousness of the bus makes you deal with the frustration of having to run across the massive map on foot. Yeah. Running from location to location is massively time consuming. Oh, yes, and it can is. take almost a minute to get from one location to yeah. the other. This yeah. is due in large part to the denizens. 
which were created to stop the player from full unrestricted movement in the fog. As without yeah. them, the map would lose any sense of challenge from the zombies. I also think a map's flow can be bad when mechanics are added in to hinder the player specifically. And what I mean by that is when you look back now at the denizens, you realize that these things were added simply because transit was on last gen hardware being the Xbox 360 and it needed it so people couldn't just randomly go outside of the map on transit, right? And so when you add mechanics that are based off of stuff like that and it's not even anything to do with the gameplay, that's where it's a bad mechanic. That's the way I see it, the you open know? areas of the fog are. But the problem is while the denizens are irritating to deal with, they are an unfortunate necessity to the fast travels on the map. Yes. All that's, of the that's what makes it worse. Hurt yeah. map flow, but the teleporting system kills it. Yeah. These teleporters are completely random. Yeah, I wouldn't say it kills it, but it just it makes it way harder because it just it adds an element of luck to the map flow, which is not good. And there are seven of them scattered all over the map. And with how long it takes to set up one using the denizens, the big problem arises. One yes. of zombies' biggest strengths is the fun you can have with friends. Yes. But if a player goes down on the map at a different location, it... Buddy's cooked. It's like, only... yeah, you see that on transit, you're like, goodbye. <laughs> to get to that player yeah and that's them. bad map flow that too that's to true learn. the bus is either too slow or never around yeah and the teleporters never send you to where you want which is why everybody on black ops 2's launch remembers town more so than transit because of map flow this is the that's perfect it example yeah of how a big map can have bad map flow with game flow, because of how relentless the denizens are, it's a constant battle to stay within the confines of the locations to avoid yeah. dealing with them. The yeah. zombies often spawn in the fog just outside of the area you're in, and because you can teleport around, they despawn. This leads to the action always being close to the player, despite the size of the map. So while the It also just adds so much of a delay to all of your movements. Like that's another thing. Like the game flow here is terrible. Game flow and the way the wall weapons are segregated too far from each other. Like that's it's a great point. There's map flow, there's game flow, but there's also straight up map design flow. And map design flow, I think, is the thing that he was kind of forgetting on in his controversial uh, tier list that I reacted well, to. The zombies is all right. The map flow is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. But just because transit failed to have good flow doesn't mean that other big maps can't succeed at that. One oh, of the true. many reasons why I love Attack of the Radioactive Thing so much is because of its flow. Attack is a very- No, this map is underrated because I've just recently realized that the flow of this map is actually well-made because the teleporters bring you to designated areas. However, this is a great example also of what I'm saying about map design flow. To even get to that point where the portals can become online for the natural player to come across that is almost impossible, I would say, which to me- ruins the flow of this map, right? Because sure, once you unlock it, it has good map flow, but inherently as a casual player getting to that point, if you can't figure it out, that's bad map design flow. And I would even say bad gameplay flow. Very you large know? map, much like transit, though not that big. Yeah. The map flow at first seems a bit much. Traversing it for the first time, going about opening up the map and turning on the power. But it's when the power is turned on is where we can see the concepts of transit's teleporting system done better realized yeah properly it's here. true attack yeah. is one big circle with a and it's not to say that chaotic teleporters that teleport you randomly are bad it's the reason i love a map like five so much is because of that chaos and confusion however when i do agree at this point when it's a huge map like radioactive thing they should be designated or like transit the right that that's a great the point center where the beach is a very similar layout to transit. Right. However, in each of the four corners of the map, there exists a teleporter pad. Yeah. When linked, these will always send you to a- See, but that's the thing, when linked, right? And I know you could say, well, what about the Wonder Spheres? You have to link those too. My difference is that the Wonder Sphere pad is like five times bigger than this little tiny small pad, which is again, that's inherent map design problem flow. 
right there. A fixed you location know? near the next teleporter going clockwise. Yeah. Meaning, if I'm near Jug, but the system is, is good. I double tap on yeah. the opposite side of the map. I simply take the teleporter in yeah. my area, then hop into the one in the next area I'm sent to until I arrive at my teammate. I agree. However, I also think though that the map flow on a map like a radioactive thing is not as great because honestly, most of the time, there's so many things on this map to pick up and do and to think. I'm not even thinking about the teleporters and how to use those. You know, I'm thinking about like the freaking chemistry step, all this complete nonsense, all the math I have to do in the Easter egg. Like that's to me where the map design itself ruins the inherent flow. Because you know? these teleporters operate instantaneously, if I need to get to a down player, or heck, if I just wanted to get to the other side of the map, I can be there in under 15 seconds. It's true. This yeah. right here is how you make a large map have a simple and good map flow. Yeah. How you traverse the map matters so much. And attack does that expertly. I agree. But again, like I said, it's just other issues with the map to me that personally inhibit this process. Despite being so large. Yeah. In addition, the pathways that lead to each area are open enough for the player to not be cut off or blindsided by spawning zombies ahead of them. And because all of the four main corners, as well as this- I just, every time I look at this map, I always think of what Codename Pizza told me about how this map looks like a PS2 game. Because every time I look at it, I'm like, wow, this is a straight on PS2 game. Center beach like, area oh my goodness. So open, the game flow in training or even camping against the zombies works so well. Yeah, again, that's another thing with what I said. Just even the way the map looks just like detracts from the experience, right? Like all these things in design matter. Just because all a map these is things big doesn't mean it has to be a hassle to navigate or play yeah. on. Yeah. But there are maps with more interesting types of layouts, ones that are multi layered, where there's a level where the player starts at and then they can go down one. Or See, I love five. If you tell me five has bad flow, I will never agree. Cause I think this map has one of the best ways of flow ever done. It's the most unique aspect of doing it. Cause it's so random yet. It feels so like alive and good, even two you levels. know? Let's take a look at two examples of how the flow of a multi-layered map can be either ruined or saved by the implementation mm -hmm. of a fast travel. Yes. There are many maps that don't adhere to the traditional structure of a sprawling arena type layout. See, it's interesting because Origins technically has no fast travel and the tank doesn't really count because it's not fast. Yet this map still has incredible flow. And I think the way that this map has good flow is because of the crazy place. Like the way you're able to almost like go into one dimension and then come out the other side of the map. That is so unique, you know? Some maps go for a more vertical system where there's yeah. a main level and a second or even third floor below. Die Rise's sense of flow is very hard to fix, for especially for the remastered, because one of the biggest questions we were talking about is how do we get the player to go back up? And so that is something we're trying to figure out where it's like getting a better key or maybe even like, what if you had a power up that spawned in something like a jet gun that lets you shoot the ground like a paralyzer lets you f fly up, you know, vertical movement was the issue in Where Die Rise. Yes. Yeah. Nine from Black Ops 4 is an example of this type of map. Yeah. As while the layout itself might be easy to learn, that doesn't always translate to having a good map flow. Ah, oh, see, this is where I disagree. This is where I disagree because when you look at nine, the map design flow inherently is genius. Like, think about it. It's one big circle at the top where you get to all the perk statues. And then there's an undercroft circle within the middle of underneath pack bunch. You have the pack or underneath the spawn room. You have pack bunch. To me, that is perfect map design flow. That is well thought out, especially with the incredible importance on the Danu Ra Zeus Odin perk system on nine. To me, that's where I see the design click where it has the perk system. To me, and I've always said this, nine's perk machines are the only time I've ever felt it's fit the Black Ops 4 game. You know, it didn't fit on Voyage because it was on the Titanic. It didn't fit really on Dead of the Night either because it's just some random mansion, right? So the map has that's one what I mean. Open, large training area where the yeah. player will spend the majority of the match. Yes. This is the spawn. Yes. It provides the biggest area for training. However, due to the nature of it, it's not easy to navigate. What do you mean? 
mean? It's a huge area. What? For the majority of the game, fire is spewing out from the floor constantly. Okay. Making it more difficult to not... But not the majority of the game. This only happens every couple rounds. ...not get hit. The issue comes when the player needs to use the shield to protect themselves from right. hits that the fire directs them towards. Here is where the map flow falls apart. What? When the player needs to repair or rebuy their shield because right. the workbench is situated on the very bottom of the map in a corner of a tight room with very narrow paths leading to it, both the map... But you have traps though. But see, this is what I mean. Like, this is what I mean. Map design is everything. There's always an answer, right? When I can't find an answer, that means the map design is just inherently not well thought out, map you know? Flow. It's just like the same points he was making for Tog. I'm bringing up in the same way for Nine. Here. And game flow suffer because of this one element. There are no fast travels. On I don't think that's bad. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. Nine's layout is so inherently well designed. Like I said, it's practically just two circles, one on top of the other. That why do you need a fast travel when the map is all just in this one little sh literal shape right like that to me is why i think so many people loved nine is because honestly i see something like a fast travel in a way as almost like an excuse to fix your map designs flow right like tog for example like what is tog without the zip lines right what is five without the teleporters it's the same thing right so to me when i see a map not have fast travel that almost goes to show that the design of it is inherently just so well thought out which is why for example i love a map like shadows because it does both fast travel well and also map design with everything tying into the main central area of the map being the junction right map. not when the underground is open not when all the perks are bought and yeah. not when pack a punch is activated Having a map with multiple floors with no quick way to get down to the other... I never find this a problem on 9. Ever. Because it's just so fast to get through to everything. And it's just such an enjoyable experience to actually go through the map every single time. Like, that to me is a strong map. If you make a map that's entertaining enough for you to constantly be going through the map and not always focusing on fast travel, to me that means you nailed it. You nailed the map design. Levels right? can be an absolute nightmare when having to traverse the map. The tediousness of having to run all the way back. And I don't think this is, bro, look at what you're looking at though. You're in like this Egyptian room. Like there's so much to take and like absorb. That's what I mean. Like, I don't understand how people can get upset at this, you know? To get your shield is bad enough. But yeah. because of this, the game flow is also ruined as the zombies will spawn. I don't find myself also going back to the shield a lot. And if that is a big issue, just get shields up, man. Just spawn it in. You know, that doesn't always have to detract from the game flow. Ahead you know? of you where you're going up and down the stairs. So even though the map has a basic looking layout, it's lack of fast travels, shield look. I think nine would suck with fast travels. I'll say it. I'll, I'll dang right say it. Nine would suck with fast travels because you wouldn't get to experience what's actually in the map. See, that's what I mean. Like, this is where I'm just going to hearken over and over. Map design is everything. Man. And the spawn system absolutely ruins it. Yeah. This is an example of a map with a vertical layout having bad flow. But there's an excellent inverse of this. I, I fully disagree. I think Nine's flow is just inherently amazing. Literally. Now, I don't normally do this. I'm but excited it's time to for say this. something positive about a Cold War map. Sheesh! Machine has another vertical style layout. As with the main level yep. the player spawns in, and then the bunker which takes up the lower half of the map. However, unlike 9, once the pack punch is acquired... Like, I do get what he's saying, where it's like, if there were teleporters, like, in D-Machine on 9, it would be better. But the thing is, is, like, I'm gonna be for real. I'm gonna just say it. I think the reason why they connect that in is, number one, because of the Dark Aether. But, because, number two, the bottom area in D-Machine is not all that interesting as 9 is, you know? And so you can make that argument of, like, yeah, sure, fast travel would play the map better, maybe... But if the map was just inherently designed better, you wouldn't necessarily need it, you know? So, 
there's pros and cons to each thing because I see the way he's seeing it as a game player, but I'm also really trying to see as to how the devs also create these maps. And the dark ether is entered. Not just one, but multiple fast travels become yeah. available. Yeah. The most notable one being at the bottom level of Noct, as like nine, the Noct building is where the player will spend the majority of their game on high rounds. Yeah. I kind of say though that like, any map that kind of forces you to camp is kind of bad flow. But like D Machine kind of did it great because of the way that it was so iconic being on the top of Noct with the ray gun. Like it wasn't that bad. Everybody who knows this camping spot too. And when the player's you know? armor is low or they need to pack a gun, they can just drop down and quickly take the fast travel right to the pack room. Right. Where the armor station resides as needing to repair armor is some Oh gosh, see this is the thing. That's a whole other map design flow conversation about having arsenal on every single map, which apparently is leaked for Golf War, which to me is bad map design. That's bad map design because it takes away the uniqueness of every map. Or you to know? The, shield. the player can also easily take the teleporter back up to the top layer as well. This is how you make a multi-layered map work. Give a I agree and then disagree though, you know? Fast travel uh, see, in the dead yeah. center for the player to use to get back and forth. With this, the map flow works fantastic. And because the zombies will do- But this is the thing, right? Would you rather wait five seconds to do a fast travel animation or actually experience a map that's just well thought out and really beautiful and get to look at it all the time? You know, I think you could even take a map like Ancient Evil and make the argument that Ancient Evil does both. And it does both really well. Right? They spawn to the area you move to and not spawn ahead of you, the game flow isn't interrupted either. Yeah. While multi-layered maps are far fewer than other types, a popular layout is the Shino Numa style. Oh no, he's going to compare it. Oh no. I I don't like Shino Numa's flow, personally. I don't think most people do because most people don't really play this map. And it's just because it's just four wings attached to a building, a main building. And it's like, yeah, it's not as iconic as the Rux layout, where it's literally a, a square, pretty much, or Nox, where it's just three rooms, pretty much, right? Yeah. So that being a center hub building or area with multiple forking paths to dead ends. Yeah. And while Shinonuma was very unique for its time, many maps have come since that have used the concept of its layout. And I wish to discuss two of them and explain the reality of why the placement of fast travels in maps like this matters. Shadows of Evil is a very popular map. So See, and then Shadows and Ancient Evil say the same thing I'm saying. is It's a beautiful map, number one. So it's like there's a lot of times I don't even use the fast travels. Because it's like I just want to look at the beauty of the map, right? And same thing with Ancient Evil. I'm regarded right? as one of the best. I would even say Ancient Evil does it better. Because to get to the underworld, you have to teleport. And that, to me, when you have to teleport and it's a completely different area, that fits the aesthetic and the theming of what teleporting actually is, rather than just getting to a certain section of the map faster. But why don't I put it on the same pedestal everyone else seems to? Shadow's layout never worked for me. See, this is crazy for me to hear. Because, like, Shadow's, while yes, it's similar to Shinonuma, it is number one more beautiful and number two instantly has way better flow because of the tram the portals uh the way it's all tied down into the pack bunch area and it, it, you want to see every part of this map that's why i don't get i i still don't understand this this point why is that now shadows may seem to have the same shinonuma type structure to it but not entirely you see you don't actually spawn in the center, really. The spawn itself is more out of the way of the area. It but I think that's sick, though. Like, the Shadow spawn room is notoriously one of the hardest spawn rooms ever because it's literally just a tiny alley. You know, I think that adds to the character of the map rather than, like, D-Machine, where it's just this big open field. It does you know? have a decent loop that quickly lets you drop down right into the hub area, but the issue here and with the rest of the map is the pathways themselves. They are so incredibly tight. What? Every single- But the- I literally think what you're saying right now goes completely against what you're saying back with Togder Toten about how, yes, they're tight, even on Tog, there's a lot of tight areas, but there's always an option. 
of where to go. Like right here, he's in foot light. You could go to the teleporter. You could go up to where the perk is. You could go all the way to the actual foot light area. Like there's options, right? He could even go towards the uh, sword statue, right? Paul there's always something. The different districts are so narrow. They give barely any room to move when the zombies are spawning ahead of you. I do agree at this point because I think this deterred casuals away from the map. But then th this is something I'll even say to the benefit of Shadows. I think this layout was so good that it just took people a couple months or even years to learn this map well enough that when they came back, they actually appreciated the map design flow for the way it inherently was. So that's why I got it. I got to disagree with this. And this point. is a problem and will happen because of the overlapping nature of the map. Because each of the three districts have higher levels with the perks reside. If the player goes up to these levels. Also, especially now with the beast mode grapple glitch, to me, there's no problem with any of what he's saying. Levels and drops down or goes back the other way, zombies are always going to spawn ahead of them. And once again, because of the tight name. I mean, I don't know how you can complain about zombies spawning ahead of you on BO3 when zombies always do that on BO4. I never find that a problem on BO3 ever, and it's simply because of the speed of zombies. And so that also goes into your gameplay flow argument because I think all BO4 maps inherently have worse flow than Black Ops 3 because of the speed of the zombies. There's two things that if I ever make a zombies mode, I will never add. Number one, the Cold War point system. Terrible. Every time I shoot a zombie, I should be rewarded for it. Number two is also the speed of the zombies. This literally takes away from map flow because when the zombies are too fast you can't actually absorb what you're seeing you're just forced to sit in a corner and camp with the helion salvo you know like that's not good game flow in the hallways the player can and will become trapped but ah here's where the fast travels come in to save the day as each district has one I genuinely believe shadows would still be a phenomenal map even if it didn't have teleports genuinely like, the tram is still just that good, you no, know? No, not really. You see, when a player is being chased or having zombies spawn ahead of them, it pushes them farther into each district. Right. And two of these have areas that are essentially dead ends. The issue is that the fact... I mean, you could say the same thing about Shinonuma, though, you know? These travels aren't at the end of the paths. They are halfway into them, tucked away in corners. And not to mention, these areas have spawns right next to them, so the player can also get trapped here too. To me, again, I've never had these issues that he's saying. That's why I find this so fascinating. And having to backtrack into a narrow hallway to try to get to the teleporter leads to, you guessed it, being trapped in the tight hallways. Why? But I mean, okay, literally you just showed a gameplay feature that actually fixes that widow's wine simply just fixes all of that flow right whereas in black ops 4 if i'm on round 60 and i have to get out of the corner in togger toten and i don't have a helion salvo how effed am i literally there's no widows sure maybe you have winter's whale but it's just again the speed at what the zombies are even if they hit all your winter's whale which they will it just makes the game not fun it takes away from the flow Right? Why is the map layout so narrow? And why are the fast travels play- Widow's Wine saves us. See, that's what I mean. I'm giving you a solution on BO3, on BO4. It's, it, it's, it doesn't hit the same. It's randomly doesn't hit the same. into the districts and not at the ritual rooms where they'd be more useful. Yeah. The tram also doesn't help as much. I think if they put the portals in the ritual rooms, it would defeat the purpose of the whole middle section, right? Because then if they put the portal at the end, I think that would actually ruin the map flow because then everything would be too far apart, right? Which is you'd think because it can only rest at one single spot at a time. I mean, the tram is honestly more so just used for fun, I would say, and also the sword. Furthermore, the path leading to it is also extremely small and will lead you to getting trapped even if it is at the location you want. The map flow on Shadows is okay, but the game flow, because of how narrow the map is, is awful again i fully disagree with that because i think the gameplay flow of this is genuinely phenomenal with the tools that you're presented the apothecan servant the sword the civil protector dog like the beast modes there's so many answers for what you said but in black ops 4 I, the only answer is the helion salvo or winter's whale in your modifier slot which if you didn't set before the game started good freaking luck
This you know? right here is the example of why the Shinonuma layout doesn't always work out. But yeah. there is a map that uses it well. And that map is one of my personal favorites. Dead of the Night. See, I, I agree with this point because in Dead of the Night, all the wings have a portal next to them. But the thing, the reason why this actually works on Dead of the Night is because Dead of the Night is actually a smaller map than Shadows. Shadows is way bigger than Dead of the Night, which is to me the reason why on Shadows, when the map is bigger like that, you need the teleporter to be at the halfway point rather than all the way at the end, like Dead on of Dead of the Night. Dead of the Night has the Shinonuma layout concept. It but does, but it does it better. Spawn in the yeah. center, but the mansion is But I would also say, to give you a counterpoint, Shiranuma's size is probably more similar to Dead of the Night than Shadows of Evils. Much more spacious and easier to train in. And here is where the important change is made. Each of the three pathways leading outside, even the Pack-a-Punch, all have a fast travel at the end of them. But also to get to that portal t probably takes you about 20 seconds. And I would say the same thing on Shadows. Right when you open up from Junction to a place to get to the portal, probably takes you about 20 seconds. So to me, it's the same thing. That's why this is... It goes beyond just map flow and game flow. There's definitely an inherent design flow where things can get messed up. 100%. And they are again at the very end of the pathway. So when the player goes down each path to get their perk or yeah. upgrade, the teleporters are placed. I'll say though, if Dead of the Night was twice as big, would you like if the portals were twice as far? I don't think you would. Yep, that's, that's all I gotta to say. Send the player that's all right I gotta say. back to the center of the mansion. Yeah. This is how you do this layout justice. You can't have narrow complex paths with poor means of navigation. That leads to bad game flow. Yeah. There even exists a teleporter that takes you to the Pack-a-Punch. As you can see, there are so many parallels that- The thing is though, again, it's like I said, you want to look at an animation of a teleportation all the time, or do you want to actually experience the richness of what a zombies map can provide? Exists in zombies. So many That's maps what I mean. Big and small it's bigger than and map and game flow. It's bigger. Smallest it's bigger. This is why flow is such an important thing to me. Yeah. It's always important to understand why something does or doesn't work. I see the way you see it, CJ, but I also see the way I see it from like the Treyarch devs of how the map has actually been brought together. And so ladies and gentlemen, this has been an incredible couple videos by CJ. Make sure to go and check this out because genuinely he makes some incredible, incredible points. And I think ultimately he's pretty, he's pretty spot on. Not, not going to lie.